And the Lord told me clear as day. And the Lord just told me Trump's going to win. The Lord also told me, the Lord told me that, the Lord told me, the Lord whispered this word to me. If you build it in this season, I'm going to bless it. The Lord told me that the Lord gave me a vision and the Lord gave me the word firehouse. Now in my mind, in my feeling, I was saying consistently, uh, you know, hey, this is what I felt God show me. I felt God show me. My mind and my feelings. And just playing what you said, you said God showed you. You talk about what God showed you, even in the last video. You said what God showed you, showing you and telling you are the exact same thing as far as God's concerned. If you're going to if you're going to represent him because a prophet or not even a prophet, but someone that prophesies, you don't have to, you don't have to be claimed or titled as a prophet. But anyone that speaks presumptuous, presumptuously for the Lord, meaning God didn't tell him to. If you speak for the Lord on the Lord's behalf, what the Lord either showed you or told you, same thing. You have to be accurate. Right. But Marcus Rogers does not want anyone else to measure his inaccuracy which unveils how he is both double-tongued and double-minded, but he got ambition. Many people confuse being a hustler or being ambitious with being anointed or that being some form of godliness because most people have a God is gain mentality and they love when their idols seem to be better than them. But I'll get to this later. Now, you heard this false prophet say verbatim, God just told me Trump is going to win. Then he says the Lord whispered to him, but in the same breath, he said it was a feeling in his mind. Now, so that I'm clear, Corey, the guy who's speaking to Marcus, he's a false teacher as well. But I'll address him and Marcus and how the devil plays both of them in another video. Because often when the devil plays both sides, he'll send one of his own false prophets to rebuke another false prophet, to fact check, or rather to audit him. And this is what we're witnessing between Corey and Marcus here. But continue. A lot of people, I feel they owe me an apology because the Bible says if you're going to judge, judge with righteous judgment. Um, that you should do due diligence. So my main thing is, I'm not saying that I did everything perfect. I've grown a lot since that time. But, you know, my only issue is like, uh, like I texted you, is if you look at some of those the old videos from 2018, 2017, uh, some of the videos when I was in South Korea, I was saying consistently, uh, you know, hey, this is what I felt God show me, right? Trump was going to win. And this is why King Cyrus, you know, if you build this season, going to bless it. And the, my only issue is, right, people laughed at me. When he won the first time, nobody apologized. All the people that mocked, you know, they, they, they tend to do that with me. Nah, bro, you're gaslighting. You knew you had a 50-50 shot that Trump could win in 2016 and in 2020 when he lost. You weren't expecting him to lose. So you changed your story when he lost. You said later that he will win only if America repent. Now, that's the most vague thing that even a false prophet could say, because you already had 50-50 odds. You were hedging your bets because you grew your channel by using Trump's name in your videos. And nobody owes you nothing. You owe the people money for robbing the tabernacle of the Lord. This guy's a cult leader. That's where I, I think maybe the apology needs, like when God does something good in my life, and it's cool, like it doesn't matter to me either way, I'm over it. I used to really care, and that's the problem. You know, I notice how people always ignore the good, good things, and then when it's something negative, they don't give the full context. So by the time the second election rolled around, anybody who looks at those videos, they see clearly that I said, hey, if America doesn't repent, then we're going to get a King Saul. There's many posts, there's many videos, I said it over and over again, that if America doesn't repent, I even remember at one point on Facebook, before they censored me, um, I tagged Donald Trump, I did a live, it was like 15,000 people watching, and I said, President Trump, uh, I believe you should take the National Day of Prayer and change it into a National Day of Repentance for America, and that will, that will help, you know, your case. The greatest red flag with Marcus Rogers is he only preaches from like 3% of the Bible. If that, most of his message is about revival, speaking in tongues, 
And he talks a lot about the prophetic, the prophetic, the prophetic, the prophetic. Also, he teaches the false doctrine that water baptism is required for salvation. Cult leaders love water baptism because it's another opportunity for them to convey the facade of a spiritual leader doing something righteous for his flock, and all eyes are set on him. It also presents the opportunity for members to participate and feel as though they belong to something as they receive a certificate of baptism. You see, cult leaders know the odds of such person who gets baptized, the odds of them faithfully paying him a tithe are very high. Then you look at other participation, revival, uh, speaking in tongues, or prophecy. These are all gimmicks that they use to build rapport with sheep. Now, don't get me wrong. These things, when they are prompted by the Holy Spirit, it restores order to the church. And there aren't just a bunch of silly women scattered on the floor. I mean, people are able to sit still and hear the word of God. Okay, and there's order in the church. But this is not the case with Firehouse, which is led by Marcus Rogers. Because that's just the, the message. Okay, but a couple things. Uh -huh. One, as I said, you predicting that Donald Trump would win, again, 70 million other people did the same thing they voted for. And so it'd be one thing if, if you predicted Donald Trump would win 10 years prior, but no one saw him coming on the scene. And so, the, but the point is, though, all of these people who love the Lord, who have the Holy Spirit in them, um, didn't get it wrong. The, the vast majority of people that, that, that we can find, now there are some folks that are, that are going to ride with Marcus Rogers, but even you would have to admit that there's a, there's a large percentage of people who say, no, Marcus, you were wrong. Uh, you gave the impression, that, and, and just plain what you said, you said God showed you. You talked about what God showed you. Even in the last video, you said what God showed you. Showing you and telling you are the exact same thing as far as God's concerned. If you're going to, if you're going to represent him because a prophet, or not even a prophet, but someone that prophesies. You don't, have to, you don't have to be claimed or titled as a prophet, but anyone that speaks presumptuous, presumptuously for the Lord, meaning God didn't tell him to, if you speak for the Lord on the Lord's behalf, what the Lord either showed you or told you, same thing, you have to be accurate. And that can ultimately, it could lead to the, 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 a spiritual death penalty because it shows that a person is just so far off doing your own thing. And here right. He's doing his own thing. God did not send him. It's clear that God did not send him. Here's what, what, where the, but that, where the that's, concern that's comes my, in. But that's my point. You didn't, you didn't acknowledge what I just said. I clearly said that if we don't repent, Trump was not going to win. There's many videos, many po but people left that part of the narrative nobody brought that up and the same way that when i said he was going to win the first time and people laughed and they made videos about me when he won nobody came and said hey man you got it right that's that's my issue with the church. okay so what, what happened what happened with me and I'm, I'm gonna keep it short is i just because i cared so much what people thought well marcus maybe that's the roots problem which played the pivotal role in you becoming the false prophet that you are today. You aim to please men over God. And the scriptures say, cursed is the man who puts his trust in men and makes flesh his strength. Okay, if you deny me before men, which is what Christ said, he said, I will deny you before my Father who is in heaven. Friendship with the world is enmity against God. You're so concerned about what people will think about you. Such a man, such a person does not belong behind the pulpit. Okay, you're not fit to teach. By your own admission, you've been compromised. Okay, for the sake of filthy lucre. And, be and because he did not get in the office, right? You know, I felt really strongly like, man, I just, the word God gave me is if you build in this season, he's going to bless it. Everything that I've built, God has blessed. Nobody can deny that. There's so many ministries that said when you gave that word, they're they're on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? They're they've got buildings, they've been blessed, and even myself, I got a whole building, you know, that God paid for. I didn't have the finances. Like literally everything I've seen it happen. Now See, this is why I say Marcus Rogers has what I call devil obligations, which in turn begets satanic employment. Okay. By his own admission, 
He just got a building for his church, but he did it by finessing the sheep. So now he got to keep those lights on and continue the heretic antics he presented to get their money in the first place. And most of these people who are giving him money are silly women. Now, what do I mean by devil obligations? For those of you who've watched previous videos on this topic, you have an idea where I'm going with this. Let's say the Most High calls Marcus Rogers to repent, and he takes heed, and finally he's obedient to the voice of the Lord. Well, does those devil obligations just disappear? Meaning the overhead and the bills that he have to pay to keep the church doors open? No. They don't go anywhere. Even if now he's serving the Most High and he's teaching the truth, the place where the people come and congregate, the man that's asking for his money to be paid for those lights to stay on is not going to just say, for the sake of the kingdom, I'm going to let your congregation dwell here for free. But it was the devil obligations, him serving the devil, which permitted him to get the building in the first place. So that's what I mean by he will have devil obligations, even if Marcus Rogers repented. Okay, Because either one or two things will need to happen in order for him to be in good standing with the Most High. Number one, he can shut down his church and take a year to fast and pray before the altar of the Lord. And of course, like I said, He'll lose that cash cow that probably nets him at least 15 bands per month. Or, number two, he can keep the church doors open, fast for a few weeks, and come back and repent openly before the congregation, admitting that he lied to them. Then he can start teaching them the bitter truth. Okay, either way, he'd lose at least 85% of his followers and they navigate to the nearest false prophet in his mega church. Meanwhile, the devil will torment him with thoughts. Okay, he'll say to him, just like Christ was tempted by the enemy, he said, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all of these kingdoms. Okay, the devil is going to come with the deal. Even after Marcus Rogers would lose everything or he's contemplating repenting or has repented, the enemy will tempt him with thoughts. Are you really willing to give up $200,000 per month? Them devil obligations are a facade for real. Okay, the music videos, the theatrics, the so-called prophetic and this cult worship. I mean, Marcus Rogers, you're really giving Carlton Pearson vibes. I mean, because you're in too deep. One might say, well, won't his cult of personality sustain a higher number of sheep if he repented? Maybe they're there just to see Marcus Rogers, even if Marcus Rogers is serving the Most High. Nah, it don't work like that. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 34, Christ said, I have come to bring a sword of division. I have not come to bring peace. Okay, a man's enemies will be that of his own household. And you have to remember, them same people who tried to make Paul a god, they nearly stoned him to death when he made it clear that he's not God. Okay, I'm not saying that this is the case with Marcus Rogers because he's certainly no Apostle Paul. Okay, I'm just using this as an example because the Apostle Paul said he counted everything that he knew as dung, as worthless, all right? But the anointing that was on Paul, because he repented, because of that anointing that was on him, the people wanted to worship him. And when Paul told them the truth, he faced some backlash. And that's what I'm comparing here to Marcus Rogers, that he knows he'll be in danger of losing that church building if he ever sincerely repented. Okay, because the scriptures say, woe to you shepherds, you greedy dogs. Okay, it also says in Proverbs twenty two sixteen, he who oppresses the poor to increase his riches and he who gives to the rich will surely come to poverty. All right, because these people who foolishly attend firehouse are well on their way to the real firehouse, also known as the lake of fire. 
because they are possessed with demons. So it's the demon that's inside of them that's making the decision on whether or not they're going to stay there or leave. Okay, because right now, every Sunday, they're hearing something new and what they believe is the prophetic, a special word for them. Okay, if not from Marcus himself, he has a staff that practices the same spell casting that he does. So if he ever decided to preach the word line upon line, precept upon precept, okay, them women, they would be gone in two Sundays and their weak husbands following behind them, at least the ones that have husbands, because this guy is playing with God. Again, the scriptures say, woe to you shepherds, you greedy dogs. Okay, Marcus Rogers, and no doubt in my mind, is right now practicing satanic employment, and he has devil obligations. He has an understanding and a battle within himself, knowing that he must continue the gimmick so that he doesn't look bad. I think it's more about him not wanting to come across or convey himself in a negative fashion before men. That's the reason why he's speaking to Corey to begin with. One of his weaknesses is he can't tolerate criticism. Not that he combats it like some other false prophets, but he tries to reason with his critics rather than doing what the word of God says. All right? Don't let your flesh write checks that your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. It's all about fates and gates. You gotta have faith and you're gonna need God's grace. Thank you.